In this video, we install Windows 11 on an unsupported machine, and we aren't taking no for an answer. Hello everyone, and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. You've checked Windows Update, and the news isn't good. You've checked tpm.msc, and no luck there either. You've checked your BIOS, but the TPM option is missing. And you've searched for a physical TPM, they're either out of stock, grossly overpriced, or discontinued. No matter which way you turn, your old PC just won't meet Windows 11's strict hardware requirements, yet you're still determined to be an early adopter. We've got you covered. In this video, we explore a tactic of last resort, which will enable us to either perform an upgrade from Windows 10, or an entirely clean installation on unsupported hardware using the full release of Windows 11. Before we begin, we'll direct you to our earlier tutorial, in which we created a full system image of our existing Windows 10 installation. At the time of this video's publication, the full version of Windows 11 has been available for 4 days, and it's entirely uncertain as to whether future security updates will be available for unsupported machines. Following the steps shown in our last tutorial, we'll create the ultimate safety net, freezing our existing Windows 10 installation, together with all files, folders, apps and settings, allowing us to rapidly revert back to our previous state should Windows 11 bring any unforeseen complications. Links to that video are found in the written description accompanying this tutorial, and we'd only recommend proceeding once that insurance is in place. To circumvent Windows 11's hardware checks, we're going to use MediaCreationTool.bat, not to be confused with the Microsoft tool of a similar name. You'll find it at the link shown on screen now, and reproduced in the written description. Normally, we'd strongly advocate avoiding third-party installers, but this is our measure of last resort, having tried all other approaches. To add a degree of reassurance, the full code for this tool can be read and inspected by anyone on its GitHub page. In short, its function is to bypass hardware checks performed during Windows installation. We return to the top of the page, where we click Download Zip, which downloads a small zip file to our device, and we click the upward pointing arrow in Google Chrome, or its equivalent in other browsers, selecting the option to show in folder. In our Downloads folder, we see a zip file with a lengthy name, which we click, selecting the option to extract all. You have free choice as to the destination of the extracted files, and we accept the default by clicking Extract. An extracted directory is created, and quickly opened, revealing its content. Once again, we click to open this folder, which takes us to a directory containing 5 further files. Note that we have the option to run either of these two files in conjunction with an installation ISO we already possess, but for now, we'll concentrate on the Media Creation tool, which offers us the greatest flexibility in our upgrade options. It may be necessary to temporarily suspend your system defences, such as your antivirus program. Again, we'd normally thoroughly discourage this practice on safety grounds, but in this instance, they'll hinder the operation of the media creation tool, and, should you subsequently find your operation cancelled, you'll need to deactivate any program which might be blocking it. Here, we temporarily disable our antivirus software Avast, confirming our intention to do so. We'll re-enable all shields as soon as we've completed our use of the media creation tool. As you'll appreciate, we're disabling levels of defences designed to keep us safe, and bypassing hardware requirements designed to ensure the smooth operation of Windows, so you'll understand that if you choose to follow this path, you do so very much at your own risk, although again, this risk is offset by creating a system image. We click to run the media creation tool, and Windows Smart Screen also emerges to potentially block our progress. We bypass this intervention by clicking More Info, taking us to this dialog, where we have the option to run anyway. Clicking that option opens the PowerShell window for the Media Creation tool, quickly followed by its graphical user interface. We've also closed all the other open windows to allow us to concentrate on the Media Creation tool. Whilst we have the option to select any historic version of Windows from 1507 onward, it's 11 which we're interested in today, and we click, taking us to a further dialog. We're going to initially create the ISO file, which gives us the flexibility to either perform an in-place update directly from the file, or create a USB installer with a utility like Rufus, or use as the installation media as the basis for a clean installation in a virtual machine. It also provides us with a usable file which we can archive for future installations. We'll also explore creating a USB installer later in the tutorial. We click Create ISO, and the process begins. 
User account control may appear on some systems, and we click yes to provide the necessary permissions, noting that they can be suppressed permanently by following the steps in the tutorial shown on screen now, and linked in the description. We're now essentially following the steps from the Microsoft Media Creation tool. You'll note that Windows 10 is extensively referenced throughout, at least in this version of the program, but don't worry, as this is very much a Windows 11 installation. There now follows a full download of Windows, obtaining 4 to 5 gigabytes of data, and this may offer an opportunity to take a break from the PC. At the conclusion, the download is verified and the media is created. Setup then cleans before closing, and if you frequently use Microsoft's installer, you might imagine that this is the end of the process. However, you should be patient, as the media creation tool returns to life, effectively modifying the ISO to remove the hardware checks. Once the PowerShell window clears, we can return to the location of our uncompressed folder, opening it, and opening its subfolder to reveal a new file named 1121H2. This is our ISO file containing a modified version of Windows 11, which will bypass hardware checks when used either to upgrade or perform a clean installation. Let's use this file immediately to update this PC. We click to open the file, which mounts it as a virtual optical disk, and here we click the setup file to begin the installation process. We again provide consent to user account control, and we see the familiar Windows logo, giving way to the setup wizard. We close the background windows to focus upon the installation, and click next to proceed. After a check for updates, our installer app needs to automatically restart, and having got a few things ready, we are presented with the license terms, where acceptance is required to proceed. After final checks and further updates, we are presented with a serious warning. As we know, our machine doesn't meet the minimum requirements, and specifically we're warned in relation to the availability of future updates. In a worst case scenario, we may find ourselves needing to manually update in future, and if this is the case, we'll certainly produce a tutorial looking into the most efficient way of doing so. For now, we accept the risk, knowing full well what we are doing. Our machine's free space is checked, and we're ready to install. Clicking install takes us outside of the desktop environment, and we can again take a lengthy break as the transition to Windows 11 takes place in the background. There will be occasional resets, but without the need for user interaction. Eventually we see our login screen, giving way to a few messages which span the gap whilst our desktop is prepared. Eventually, we see the Windows 11 desktop in all its glory, and the start menu also pops up. A few quick post-installation pointers. Heading to Windows Update, it's not immediately clear whether we'll receive any updates, as we're simply advised that we're up to date, and a further check fails to reveal any additional evidence, whilst our update history only points towards updates we've previously installed in Windows 10. Activation, as we'd fully expect, is inherited from Windows 10. Performing a clean installation is equally straightforward, and whilst we could image the ISO file we've just created using a tool like Rufus, the media creation tool itself offers this functionality. We've now inserted a USB stick with a capacity greater than 8GB, and we'll rerun the media creation tool, again clicking more info when smart screen is triggered, selecting the option to run anyway. We again see the PowerShell window, followed by the GUI, and we'll once more close all other windows in order to concentrate on the media creation tool. After selecting 11, this time we'll opt to create USB. The process begins, and the PowerShell window briefly disappears, giving way to user account control, where we click yes to advance. As before, we return to the Microsoft media creation tool. We again see a Windows 10 heading, and once more be assured that we are creating Windows 11 media. We select the default option to create a USB flash drive, clicking next to proceed. We select the only drive available, namely our E-Drive, and again click next to advance. After getting things ready, a full download of 4 to 5 gigabytes takes place, and we can take a break as this phase will not require our attention. Once completed, the download is verified and the media created. At the conclusion of the process, we are advised that our flash drive is ready, and we can click to finish. After a brief cleanup, we can eject our USB media, and it's now ready to insert in a machine in order to perform a clean installation. If you haven't done so already, you'll need to temporarily amend your computer's BIOS settings to boot from your USB drive first. With those settings in place, and our USB drive inserted, it's time to boot up the device. If all has gone to plan, we'll see the familiar Windows logo, giving way to the first of the setup screens. 
From here, it's simply a matter of following the traditional Windows setup process to perform a clean installation. Once again, any hardware checks will be bypassed. Check out our back catalogue of more than 100 tech tutorials and be sure to subscribe to follow our future projects by clicking the logo shown on screen now. If you'd like to keep watching, there are links on screen to more videos you might find useful. If you can improve our methods, if you need assistance, or if you just want to discuss anything you've seen, get in touch via the comments. We love to hear from you. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon for your next tech fix.